we have finished the concept of production function and cost function. Next, we talk about the profit maximizations. So this is the main objective of the firms to maximize the profit. First, we talk about the profit maximization. Second, we take a look at the marginal revenue. Third, we take a look at the short run supply curve. Finally, we take a look at the profit functions and the input demand. Okay, let's get started. To begin it, we will first take a look of the profit maximization problems. So this is the profit equation. This is equal to the revenue minus the cost. Okay. So mathematically, if you want to maximize the profit, you will do the first order condition. Then this is equal to DRDQ minus DCDQ and set it equal to zero. Okay. So DR, DQ is the marginal revenue. DC, DQ is the marginal cost. Okay, here you can see that if the profit is maximized, the marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost at the profit maximizing point. Okay, well this is the necessary condition and the sufficient condition is that the second order condition is less than zero okay so diagrammatically here we assume that the revenue is a straight line okay in price the price is unchanging so marginal ref so the revenue is a straight line for the cost this is some shape like this okay so the profit maximizing point is the slope of revenue is equal to the slope of slope of the cost so here okay the slope will be the same that means this at this point this is the profit maximizing point and the di vertical dis distance is the profit okay well here the slope is slope of the revenue and cost are also the same but here is not the maximizing conditions so if you take a look of here the second derivatives will be bigger than zero so this is not the maximizing point so the necessary condition and sufficient con condition is that the second derivative is negative so this he only here is the profit maximizing condition so second we will take a look at the concept of the marginal revenue since we have already taken care of the cost we are going to see the revenue now Okay, so this is the revenue function, the price times the quantity. Okay, price of each good times the number of goods sold is the total revenue. So marginal revenue is just simply dr dq. Okay, so if I do this, this is just equal to p plus q times dp dq. Okay. So if I manipulate by a little bit, this is equal to P times 1 plus Q over P times DP DQ. Okay, still remember the price elasticity of demand is DQ DP times P over Q. So here you can see that this is just the inverse of the price elasticity of demand. So marginal revenue is equal to P times 1 plus 1 over EQP, the elasticity, of, the price elasticity of demand. So here you can see that if the elasticity of demand is less than negative 1, 0, bigger than negative 1, then the marginal revenue would be, okay, in the first case, if this is more than negative 1, then the marginal revenue will be positive. If it's 0, then this becomes 1 minus 1, so this is negative. Uh, should be negative 1, okay. Then the marginal value is, is equal to 0. Finally, if the elasticity is bigger than negative 1 and of course smaller than 0, because elasticity is always 0 in, for the price, then the marginal value is less than 0, okay. So if you draw this in a diagram, this is a demand curve, and the marginal revenue is exactly half of the demand curve. 
because here is the margin revenue equal to zero and you can see that the price elasticity is equal to negative one so this is the unit elastic point okay so this is the midpoint midpoint is equal to the zero of margin revenue that's why margin revenue is half of the demand function okay so you have another interpretation for this p equal to 1 plus 1 over the elasticity so at the equilibrium mr equal to mc so here this expression also equal to mc so if you do some algebraic manipulation you will get p minus mc divided by p is equal to negative 1 over the elasticity okay if you take the absolute value it will be easier so this is just a mark up okay if the elasticity is high so the markup will be lower okay if it's higher then the denominator is very high then the markup will be very small so the numerator here is more well if the elasticity is low okay so say there are no substitute then you can charge a higher markup okay so here is the relation between the price elasticity of demand and the markup well next we talk about the short run supply curve in the price taking firm so now you know if we want to do the profit maximization first we want to set that price minus marginal cost is zero and the second order condition is negative marginal cost prime q is less than zero so by this we automatically can see that the marginal cost is an increasing function of the output okay so this is the property of the marginal cost so how to find the supply curve here okay since the marginal cost is an increasing function of q that means q increase marginal cost increase and for, for, and for our supply when the price increase output increase so here actually the marginal cost the short run marginal cost back is the supply curve of the firm so in a firm okay the supply curve would be the short run marginal cost and up to here okay below this point we call this point shutdown point so if the price is lower than this amount then the supply of the the supply of the firm will be goes to the y intercept okay then go down so here this is the supply curve of the firm so one uh, and here is called the zero profit point so one question arises that why the firm still operate in this region okay so let's investigate so in this region the firm can choose to operate and choose to shut down so if the firm choose to operate they will earn the profit that is equal to p times q minus as we see short run variable cost minus short run fixed cost okay so just total revenue minus total cost and if the firm try to shut down the profit is equal to minus sfc because if they shut down they don't generate profit and they don't have to pay the variable cost however they rent the area already so they have to pay the short uh, fixed cost well here you can see that at this region the price is still above the short run average cost uh, SVAC so this part is actually positive then you compare two situation so the situation okay so here positive minus some constant this is just minus some constant therefore you can see that if the firm still operates then the profit is still higher than the shutdown case Oh, of course after the shutdown point price is below SVAC 
then if they keep operating, their profit is much more negative than shutdown. Okay, so this this explain why here is the shutdown point rather than the zero rather rather the firm shutdown here.